The great black highway stretches out before us on the plains of America, a straight arrow pointing towards the horizon. The siren song of photographic possibilities it sends out is as strong today as it ever was. That same song that lured the likes of Walker Evans, Henry Cartier Brisson, Robert Frank, Lee Friedlander, and Stephen Shaw to load up their cameras, fill their gas tanks, and head out to create their own chapters in the album of the American road trip photography. These photographers and countless others have set out on their own individual roads of discovery, which sooner or later have all converged into a superhighway of images that have combined to fill our minds with the photographic cliches that those of us from outside of America think of when we close our eyes and in our heads go out on that journey into the land of strange and limitless possibilities. How's it, how's it? Way back in 2001, I was sitting in a plane looking out the window as it descended through the clouds. I was getting my first glimpses of the USA. She was teasing me for a bit with, with glimpses of, of the suburbs and the endless roads. Then suddenly we dove under the clouds and a horizon exploded before me. It was flat, so very flat and wide, with nothing breaking the eye as far as I could see. It was a suggestion that this land was big, that it was far, far bigger than anything I had experienced. Growing up, I'd had a diet of American TV, American films and American culture. In South Africa, we even called trousers pants. So those first few days in America felt extremely surreal. Like everything was at once familiar and yet oddly new. I got stupidly excited about seeing yellow school buses and, and there was a sign that said that there was gas food and lodging to be had at the next off-ramp. At the time, I thought that was just the name of a film and not an actual real sign. At the heart of those images in my head though, it wasn't the TV or the films or the books like on the road that I read, but it was the images of photographers who had taken that childlike wonder and who had gone west to, in, in the words of Gary Winograd, to see the world or to see how it looked photographed. This book, The Open Road, is an excellent celebration of road trip photography as a genre. Much like using a AAA roadmap, we're going to use it to seek out promising stops as we go on our own journeys of discovery. Is road trip photography even a, a genre? It can encompass everything from the journeys of, of discovery, both of the landscape and, and of self-discovery. It can also be visual poetry or simply just hopping in the car with a camera and, and seeing what transpires. Like so much art, it's all about the vibe of the thing. You know? you, you'll know road trip photography when you see it. Road trips since the 1930s have been like a central theme in, in American photography. And this is possibly because the road itself is that one commonality between modern day photographers and those early day pioneers. Obviously the cameras and the cars and the places and the size have changed. But the road itself, the tarmac remains. To my mind, the roots of road trip photography come from Walker Evans. Although he didn't specifically embark on, on a road trip per se, you know, celebrating the open road, he did create a body of work that explored the small, off-the-track towns, their, their unique characters and, and personalities. His photographs created during the Depression laid the idea for subsequent photographers that you could, you could travel around and you could create photographs that had a narrative about America as a place. This idea of a narrative was so novel at the time that apparently in the original pressing of his 1938 book, American Photographs, there was even a warning in, in block caps, no less, just so you know how important it was, that the images within the book were to be looked at in sequence, not hopping from here to there, but as a natural journey. Great images obviously certainly do exist, but it's a reminder to us that so often the stories these photographers weave are told in the gaps between the images. So this is a fantastic book called Photography and the American Road Trip. And it's a really good way of getting into a couple of the, of the, of the greats of, of road trip photography. So when I was researching this video, I found it was great. There were lots of little connections between, you know, all the people who helped sort of lay the foundations for photographers. So Walker Evans used to drive around, you know, um, Robert Frank when he was doing his 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 road trip. Robert Frank was friends with, uh, or he worked at the same place as Cartier Bresson when he was when Cartier Bresson was doing his road trip, and 
and you know Robert Frank was friends with Jack Kerouac and so this is there's a whole narrative that that holds these guys together I would really encourage you to find some of these books like this that give you such a snapshot of, of individual photographers and can open up your eyes to what on the face of it might just be a simple defined genre but it's so broadly expressive it can mean so many different things to different people of course no discussion about road trip photography could even <laughs> even consider to leave out Robert Frank I mean you know his his work the Americans is just it, it is the bible which most people hold up as a, as a definitive work in the genre of course like a lot of like a lot of definitive works at the time it wasn't particularly well received and it's only latterly that I think that the the, the visual language of of people in general has caught up with being able to fully appreciate the work that he puts in into his his photography. Earlier in the episode I kind of stumbled over or tripped over Gary Winogrand's statement that he wants to or he photographs the world to see what it looks like photographed and and of course now we're going to see how he sees the world when it's photographed and the phrase snapshot quality comes up a lot when you sort of look at certainly photographers who, who, who kind of do road trip photography and I'll talk in a little bit more in depth later on about the difference between a photograph and, and, and a snapshot but I feel that the best road trip photography has this idea of it's something that is not contrived it's, it feels like a slice of of real life that it is something that that is happening unlike say a lot of um you know sort of you know sort of more art photography which has a, a sort of more unreal element about it. you know this is just an average everyday scene we can see ourselves in it but then it's so much more and and that's what i think gives in gives these photographs an intimacy and of course i suppose these days broadly speaking a lot of people would call this street photography but i always sort of felt that the difference is certainly for me is that a lot of these are more small town they are the, the the fringes of america and of course america is such a large continent that they that all these communities can exist and, and ostensibly they're all the same place they're all america but they're not america they're little snapshots of of their own their own societies their own little communities that are, are completely unique of course here's our old friend william eggleston and and his photography now again you know there's this idea of, of snapshot-esque quality and i know that that eggleston was i certainly believe that eggleston is not overly keen on on his work being defined or you know or having that label attached to it and and somebody like Stephen Shaw is. And of course, I've, I've talked at length about Eggleston, so I'm not going to dwell on him too much. So I first to say, if you are interested, I will link to his video in, in the, the cards above. So if you want to go and see more of his, his work and hear, hear my thoughts on whether or not he is the world's most overrated photographer, then, then go and have a little look-see. Lee Friedlander is a really great example of having a common thread that runs through your, your photographs. And if we look at this image here of this couple looking at Mount Rushmore, he hasn't taken the obvious way of, of photographing Mount Rushmore. He's decided to, to, to treat it slightly different. I think that's a really good example of trying to make the obvious less obvious. And throughout all of these photographs that we're looking at here, there are monuments to, you know, to war dead, to civil war, things to you know to anything it, it, so the common theme is is a monument and and these are, are fairly typical there's nothing you know groundbreakingly sort of different about them but as you sort of carry on you can sort of see that the monuments stay but what they're surrounded in starts to sort of dominate more until we get to a point like this where the monument itself is almost lost this is in LA and we have these two figures here just in this kind of this jungle and there's a slight bit of, of road intruding on them through there but of course here we have the urban jungle of New York and and the, the, the monument is very central this is where we have the the real jungle 
but throughout all of these images there's that monument i love that that thread that runs through it so you know that they are kind of like the same body of works even though the the scenes are quite disparate there's a commonality it's not in america but my own favorite road trip is the 800 miles from joburg to cape town you know, the small towns, the wide open skies, the empty roads, you know, the dusty scrub of the crew. And those purple mountains on the horizon, they never fail to inspire me. I'd love to hear what's your favorite place to drive and, and to be inspired. Not just in America, but, but the world. Where would you love to go and just spend some time behind the wheel with a camera, letting happen chance just take you where it will? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be fascinated to hear. John Merowitz is going to help me illustrate a thing that I think is what is needed to have proper road trip photography. And, uh, you know, and there's, there's some of the, the more obvious pictures here. But one of the things about, about road tripping is it gives, gives one a sense of insula insulation. You cut off from the world for long periods of time. And especially on, on, a, on a wide, straight, open road, your mind is drawn to introspective. You start thinking about things in a way that you don't when you're in, in, in the everyday environment. So, so what happens is all of a sudden the, the small details, the small interests, they, they, they get more power when you're thinking about them. And, and, and so you drive past a scene like this, which ordinarily, if you saw it on your commute to work, you wouldn't give it a second thought. But when you've been facing the same strip of open road for hours at a time, all of a sudden, this rundown play park in the middle of South Dakota assumes great importance. It becomes something tantalizing, something to be explored and, and, and is worth looking at. When you stop at the side of the road for, for, for a break and, and, and a drink and something to eat, then the, the, the tray in the car next door with those milkshakes assumes a visual importance that it ordinarily may not have if you've just dropped in around the corner on a Sunday afternoon just to have a, a you know, a Slurpee or something. It's that which I think is you need to have in your mind as, as to, you know, to be a, a, a road tripping photographer is the ability to let your mind wander, to let it just drift away and to let the small things assume a greater importance. Originally, this video was going to be about just Stephen Shaw, and I, you know, it, it, it's kind of, it's been, and I will come back to him and, and do in more in depth, but this is his, his, his images from, from Uncommon Places, and I mentioned earlier this idea of, of snapshot qualities, and I think one of the things that people sort of say, oh, but that's just a snapshot, they forget that it isn't a snapshot, because at the time, this was an unusual thing to photograph. Nowadays, photo, you know, images of food and all sorts of things have become fairly commonplace because everybody's got a camera and they, they take pictures of, of pretty much everything. But those days, when it was film and when it cost you money every time you tripped the shutter, people were more circumspect about what they took. But so they confused the idea of this being a snapshot because it's a picture of a well, a melon and, and some, some pancakes. But it's not a snapshot because, because the person in 1973 would not have taken a picture of that because they would go, well, that cost me money. I'm going to take a picture of my child instead. So these are not snapshots. They are thoughtful and they've been taken with purpose. Whereas a snapshot, certainly in the context of the 70s or whatever, was a picture of possibly your family, of something of interest that wasn't just a picture of some light bulbs or, or this, which is, you know, um, a, a store that's being loaded with some some onions and some oranges and, and things of that nature. I'm sure the people who worked there every single day saw this and would say, well, why are you taking a picture of that? It's, it's there, it's the same. But now, some 40 something or other, I can't even, well, it's 74, I'm born in 77, 47 ish years later, now we know what US 10 post falls Idaho on August 25th looked like. And that's the beauty of these things. Joel Sternfeld is responsible for two of possibly the most famous it's a road trip photographs, certainly that, that, that I sort of spring to my mind. And, and these are the, the lovely, lovely, he says, paging through and hoping that it will turn up in a second. But in the meantime, let's have a look at some of his, his wonderful work. But I, I wonder, I've not seen this one before. Look at that. That is a little baby. Because, of course, if you're going to go see a dam, you know, put a, put a baby in a cot. That's, 
that's how we roll. That's <laughs> all, all, all great. But his his photography again, it has that sort of snapshotty quality. But like I was saying with with um, Stephen Shaw, that it's not a snapshot because we've got these two examples. These ones I was sort of thinking of is that we have this very famous picture of the house burning and, and the fireman buying some pumpkins, and the the obvious thing. What most of us would do would be to take a picture of the f of the building on fire. I think we'd be naturally drawn to that, and then you would have missed all of this. And that that itself, the house burning, isn't really particularly interesting, and we certainly wouldn't be looking at it, you know, some some forty odd years later. But it's because he stepped back, he explored the possibilities, he was open to what was going on around him. And the same with with the elephant. You know, these days. This crowd of onlookers here, as, as an elephant is, is, is drenched with water to stop it dehydrating, would all be on their phones and they'll be taking pictures and stuff and missing the point. And, and possibly a lot of photographers would run in and, and try and get on to, to the elephant themselves. And then they would miss everything else that's going on, giving it a time and a place. And I think that's what, what road trip photography is about, is showing us that this exists in a, this large continent where so many things have, where you can drive around a corner and find an elephant lying in the road being hosed down. Coming up slightly more to the modern day, of course, we have Alex Soth, who has a channel on YouTube, which I would recommend you go and have a look at. He's, he's an extremely um, eloquent photographer when it comes to speaking about photography. This, these, these images here were taken in, sort of, you know, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and, and they have a, again, this, this kind of quietness that they've been lost. And, and that's one of the things about America is that that so many things can fall through the cracks that these places exist and they, they just keep on trucking and and if you look at these these are from you know sort of 2000 2002 and they don't feel any different in terms of time and place and space to somebody like you know William Eggleston certainly the Reds here that's probably why Eggleston sort of jumped in into my mind and and what have you and and it's a reminder that that America is it is a it is a large place that in some respects evolves very quickly and in other respects just never seems to change. Jumping forward a couple of years you know, so now we're looking at uh, Justin Kurland and and it's interesting you know if you if you go back to think about the world of, of Walker Evans you know he documented this 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 the, the big the birth of, of modern America now we he we sort of see it coming up to to the modern age or near, near down at the modern age. And the face of America has, has changed. In some, some respects, it's, it's still the same. You, this gas can here says spare some gas. And these, these could be people in their jalopy who are heading out to California. You know, you never know. So there are, there are echoes and similarities. Now, this, this gentleman with his suitcase under what looks like a dusty side lay-by al along the road. So the, the clothing and the way the people look has changed in, in, in many respects. But but the people themselves, they're, they're echoes of those images of of Walker Evans, of the Depression. And of course this is this is 2011, so it's 2008. So you know, so it was in America's next great depression. And and it's interesting to see that, that the more things change, that the more they stay the same. At the end of this book there are two photographers, Teo Honorato and Nico Krebs. And their, their photography is, is absolutely wonderful. I love what's going on here, that they have a more of an arty kind of feel. And I, I hesitate to use that word with, with, when talking about photography, but it definitely feels like there's more of, a, more of an artistic quality, which is somewhat at odds with some of the, the photography that we've looked at previously, which have a kind of more snapshot aesthetic. And, and please don't get me wrong, I like, like both of them. And the only reason I say this is kind of more of an arty thing is that they tended to... to I think looked at the compositions and made them more graphic, and probably that's what I'm, I'm sort of responding to. Certainly, so sort of these two photographs here remind me of, I say, Robert Adams' image of his stuff in the in the New West. But at the same time, these are very William Eggleston, and and here's something going on which I quite like. At first, I'm sort of going, what's 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 going on here? And they've obviously gone around. And this this feels like it's, it's some sort of motel that's been either 
set up to be like this. There's some sort of visual play going on. This one's called Nights In and this one's called Nights Out. And I can't quite figure out. I don't want to look in too close because I'll stick my head within the... Um, uh, within the frame, but I think what they've done is they've taken a motel room and they moved everything outside into into the wide bushness, and I, I quite like because it does it stops you. I mean, this is what I'm saying about the the artiness of 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 their work coming through. It's extremely interesting, and they've brought their own road with them, which I, I quite like, and I, I like this very much. These, there's some some potato fries there on the edge of the Grand Canyon. There's, there's a little bit of of playfulness, and it's just a reminder that that you don't necessarily need to be earnestly serious. I think about, you know, about, about any photography, really. Feel free to play with, with the expectations of the genre and, and just do, do your own thing. They haven't got a road. They've, they've made their own road in a little sunset there. So it's fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed it. It's a very brief look at, at, at this book. And, and I would certainly recommend, you know, getting a copy. Uh, you know, it, it, it's wonderful to to see these these photographers, to read the essays, I think it's important. If, you, if your if your monographs come with essays, read the essays. They give you so much insight into into the the workings of of, of these photographers and and make your enjoyment of the photography so much better. Photographers have been feeling the pull of the open road now for, for decades. And as the world begins to open up again, I hope that you'll be inspired by some of the photography you've seen here to go on your own journey of discovery. It doesn't have to be across the wide open plains of America, even just if it's, if it's a highway between towns. Try and see the world through the eyes of the passerby. See what exists on your very doorstep. Click on the playlist here to discover more in-depth videos about some fantastic photographers that I know you're going to love watching. Thanks for being here and I'll see you again soon.